Good morning, and welcome to Morning Coffee in Kyoto. Today with the Mr. Donut mug. Yesterday I was talking about Omicron, and I kind of veered into quarantine territory, so I thought I would talk about what the quarantine situation has been like, um, depending on what country you're coming from. Um, the quarantine system is different. Um, Quarantine is always mandatory, um, and it's something that people don't quite understand. So if you're here and you're planning on traveling, um, this is something you need to know. One of my friends um, found out that I was, uh, before Omicron, of course, trying to travel home for the holidays. And they asked me, so has anyone asked you to quarantine? And I said, what do you mean asked me to quarantine? And they said, well, you know, because I think we have to quarantine or something, but I don't know how they monitor it. And I said, you don't know how they monitor it? And they said, wait, what? And I said, here, please join me. Um, there are several groups online dedicated to helping support people who are trying to return to Japan. And um, they have all of the... Uh, information there so if you are stuck outside of japan and you haven't joined one of these groups yet i might encourage you to do so no these are not for people trying to travel to japan these are for people who are stuck outside of japan and what do i mean stuck outside of japan in 2020 um around the end of march beginning of april japan very quickly shut off from the rest of the world and unless you had a Japanese passport, you couldn't get back in. Um, this included people who had permanent residency here. So I'll set you up with a situational story. Let's say in mm, July. In July of 2019... You were sent to another country as a business person for one calendar year. And so you left in July of 2019 to, let's say, go to the UK to um, do business there for one year, leaving behind your family here in Japan. And so you left in July. And so August, September, October, November, December, January being six months. So by January, you would have been stuck out of six months of Japan. January was when all the stuff started really, really going down. And people started really worrying about what was going on. So you might have said, hmm, well, I still have six months left on my re-entry permit. So it's not a really big problem. And my boss says I have to stay to finish my work here. So I'm just going to keep working. So question, what is a re-entry permit? Whenever you leave Japan, if you are a resident, they staple a paper inside of your passport. On the back of this paper is something that looks like a squarish stamp. This is a re-entry permit. It says on it, with this stamp, you're allowed to re-enter Japan within a period of one year. So you actually have to sign the front of the paper that says, do you plan on re-entering Japan within one year? Because if you don't, that's a big problem. If you leave Japan and you're a resident and you intend on coming back after a period of longer than one year, and you need to apply before you leave, before you get to the airport, for a re-entry permit for a longer period of time. I believe you can get them somewhere between three to five years. So, this person, however, in my scenario, left on a regular re-entry permit. So, six months go by. January, it's thinking, well, this whole coronavirus situation seems to be getting worse and worse, but there's no way they'll shut down. And even if they do, I have a re-entry permit. And I just have to make sure I get back to Japan before July again when I left. 
So then we keep going. February, March, April, three more months go by. And suddenly in the beginning of April, everything shuts down. The borders close and everything is just collapsing day by day and everything's going under lockdown. Well, you still have three months left on this contract that this person has to work in the UK and their boss says, um, stay at home, but keep working. Um, but we're going to see if we can figure out how to get you back to Japan. And you go, excuse me? get me back to Japan? And they go, yeah, because the borders are closed. They go, oh, well, I, I, you know, I already have a return ticket and I'm a resident and I live there. And they go, yeah, well, it's closed out of residence too. And so then May, June, July, your last three months come. And well, they're still not letting any residents back into Japan. So now you're stuck in the UK. And this is what happened. Not this exact scenario, but something very similar happened all around the world to people who got stranded outside of Japan during their one year period um, and before they were able to get back in. Maybe because of work, maybe because of other things. Um, I have students whose parents are stuck out. I have friends whose significant others are stuck out. Um, so what ended up happening was in October of 2020, finally, um, permanent residents were allowed to return. And so people who were still within the one year period of their reentry permit were able to come back. However, people who had overstayed that reentry permit, even though they have residency, they didn't have a visa to get on a plane to get here because their reentry permit had expired. So they had to go to consulates all over the world and attempt to reapply. And it really depends on who was at that consulate and who was going to allow it and what was going to happen. And so slowly, since October of last year, people have limped their way back into the country and been able to reunite with their loved ones. Um, but some people still were unable to get in. And so now that the borders are closed again, um, People are getting stranded again. People are still outside. Um, there was one amazing story that I heard because um, the other problem is you have to have done a quarantine before you come within a country where people were allowed to come in from. Because for a long time you had countries where you weren't allowed to come in from or countries where you had mandatory quarantines or all kinds of other issues. And I did hear a story about a man who rented a sailboat and they had to file all their paperwork leaving their port of, of um, origin and then sailed for 15 days outside of international like boundaries out in, out in international waters <laughs> and then docked and showed on their paperwork that all the people on the boat, A, tested negative on the PCR test, but B, had been out of any country for more than the 14-day period. And then they were able to enter Japan. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, but these are the things that have been happening for people to get back to their families. And it's just been absolutely crazy. And finally, we were getting to the point where people could come in again, and then Omicron. Um, so it's been devastating for so many who were just about to get here. Um, I know for things like the JET program, finally, um, sometime around September, between September and November, they were finally letting some JET program participants in. And then that got shut down too. And there were so many stories of JET program participants who tested positive. Um, and then they were told, well, you got to wait 90 more days before you try again to get in. Um, so it's just been heartbreaking for so many. So then those of us who were here trying to get home to see family for the holidays, we kind of feel guilty or even thinking we could have, you know, 
attempted to see family. Um, but it's just hard. It's just hard for everyone. For the people stuck out. For the people trying to see loved ones somewhere else in the world. Um, but we're all going through it. We're all feeling this, so... It just is what it is. Um, but yeah, if you're a tourist and you're waiting to try to get into Japan, don't go online and try and post in any of these groups because nobody wants to hear about it. <laughs> We're all just stuck. And it's not the time for tourism yet. Um, I saw so many people and my friends back in the States. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to Italy and we're doing all this stuff. And they traveled all for the summer of 2021. Yeah, nobody in Japan went anywhere. And if they did, they are lucky that they snuck in and snuck out. What ends up happening, I guess I started this story talking about you know, do you have to quarantine? Um, the government controls the quarantine. When you get into the country, you have to install an app on your phone after you take the PCR test. And then they track your movements. Um, you're only allowed to go out for groceries and essentials. And you have to be careful when you go out. Um, but you stay in quarantine for 14 days. They'll call you every day. If you don't respond from the phone, they'll send somebody to go check on you. Um, it's a mandatory quarantine. There's no choosing to do quarantine or not choosing to do quarantine. You stay in quarantine. Um, yeah. It's, um, it's like Big Brother. Um, now with the hotel quarantines, I mean, obviously, you, you can't go anywhere. They take you to the hotel from the airport. And then at the end of the mandatory stay, they'll take you back to the airport. And then you have to travel from there to wherever you're doing your private quarantine for the rest of your 14 days. Some people have a 10-day mandatory quarantine, and then the last four days they can do personally. Some people only have a three-day mandatory quarantine at a hotel. It really depends on your situation. But if you are a resident or um, have a Japanese passport and you are wanting to travel or you're thinking of going out or coming back in, please join one of these um, How to Return to Japan online support groups because um, it's filled with information and all of the latest news. Um, and yeah, there isn't any tourism. Nope. Good luck, everyone. Um, I gotta go get ready and start the day. Um, Hopefully we can all see each other again sometime soon. But it ain't yet. <laughs> ah, have a good day. Man. <sighs> My brain is not completely awake in the morning. <laughs> I should probably make these videos. Welcome to morning after coffee in Kyoto, so I could at least think. <laughs>